So hey folks, so I am leaving the dealership now in a 2017 Ford F250 four-wheel drive FX4 STX package. So if you guys don't know, Ford reintroduced the STS package this year in both the F150 and the F250 line of the Super Duty line. Kind of interesting point to make is that the STS package is essentially a I don't really want to call it a luxury package. Let's say it's a trim package upgrade over the XL package. So it's between an XL and an XLT model, um, except you get kind of the looks package of an XLT, but at a slightly lower price point. So this has a 6.2 liter gas engine in it. These trucks have come such a long way when it comes to handling characteristics and riding dynamics that it is a whole different experience than if you had even a 2011 model Super Duty or, uh, or really any of the heavy duty trucks from any of the manufacturers. It definitely feels like it's a capable truck. So I gotta say, this center console was specifically designed by Ford to fit two Chick-fil-A bags in it. Kind of crazy. So now I'm getting onto the expressway here. The truck still accelerates pretty good. Um, and the engine does not feel underpowered for the truck. It just is a different experience than if you're gonna drive a diesel. It's pretty much saying that if you hop into a Mustang GT and you accelerate and then you hop out of that car and hop into a Shelby GT350 and you accelerate that car, it's gonna feel different. Neither of them are gonna feel sluggish, but the GT350 is definitely gonna feel like it has more power, significantly more power. So I'm actually about to get on a section of road here that is made out of concrete and it's got some pretty big expansion joints and dividers. So I wanted to drive over those to give you kind of an idea of what it's like on that type of surface. This engine does not feel sluggish. It does not feel as if it is, I guess, underpowered for this truck. But what I'll tell you on the other hand is it doesn't feel like the diesel at all. The diesel has so much more torque across its entire RPM range that uh, a good example of that is if I'm going 30 miles an hour and I hit the gas, you're going to feel a, a diesel engine suck you back in the seat and take off. On this particular truck, when you hit about 20 to 40 miles an hour and you hit the gas, it feels sluggish. From zero, it feels pretty powerful. It actually feels like it has really good throttle response. But as you can see on this particular road, this is the type of road that you can really tell the difference between a half ton truck and a three quarter ton truck. It's definitely, you know, what I would consider a rougher road, but this truck is handling it exceptionally well. Um, it feels very similar to the uh, the Ram Laramie Longhorn that I also reviewed, um, but it is far, far smoother than any of the dualies that I reviewed. And I want you guys not just to take my word for it, but, you know, go to a dealership, hop in one of the trucks and take it for a drive. Stop by a Ram dealership one Saturday and then hop into a Ford dealership and kind of see what you think personally. So one thing that I really like about this truck is its utilitarian feel to the inside. It's actually pretty nice. This is a type of truck you might want as a personal work vehicle because it doesn't have a number of luxury features that you might get in a Lariat or even an XLT model, but it's not really missing anything that you need. It's got power windows, door locks, it's got full AC heater. Um, it does not have a backup camera, which is kind of surprising but it does have uh, four wheel drive as well as electronic locking rear differential. And the particular placement of this truck is for those folks who want to get into a well-equipped truck, but don't want to spend a ton of money doing it. And the 6.2 liter gas engine is perfectly suitable for 99% of folks out there who are going to be towing trailers, towing goosenecks, things like that, um, but don't need the towing capacity of a large diesel. This is gonna provide you with pretty much everything you're looking for. It's, it accelerates, but it doesn't have that same pull you in your seat feel that you get from any of the diesel engines. So if you're looking for that, and if you need that type of torque, especially if you're going uphill or if you're pulling large trailers, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to opt for the diesel. But if you're hauling a, any travel trailer, or really any type of utility trailer, boat, truck is gonna pull it very well, partially because of the weight of the truck. The curb weight of this truck is so much greater than that of an F-150 or a half ton that that weight also helps you control the trailer. It gives you some sway control inherently. If you get a long wheelbase version of the truck with an extended bed, then you're also gonna have some sway control inherently in that setup as well. 
Hey folks, so now I'm on the outside of this STX F250, and what I can tell you is that the truck has a nice look to it. You know, this is not going to be your XLT package or your Lariat package, but it's a good compromise for those who are looking for a lot of the features of an XLT, but in a slightly less expensive package. As you can see, this truck has an MSRP of 45550 It comes with a lot of really nice features that you would want in a truck like this, such as trailer brake controller built into it, upfitter switches, which I'll go over when I get in the interior, has sync built into it, uh, an STX appearance package, and 373 locking rear axle. This truck does not have a slow open tailgate. It has a standard handle here. On the higher end models, you actually have a button which opens the tailgate, but on this one, you pop it down. It does have a torsion bar that runs through it to assist in uh, helping it go up and preventing it from falling too quickly. This particular truck does not have a hitch kit in it, so it does not have the fifth wheel puck system or the gooseneck system, but that can be installed. They make a lot of aftermarket kits for it. Again, this is the FX4 package. Crew cab. With the STX trim. This truck is equipped with 18-inch wheels and Goodyear Wrangler tires. On this particular package, it does not have the LED or the quad headlight system or fog lights. Also notice that this truck doesn't actually have any rear parking sensors either. Here's the undercarriage of the truck. Of course, fully e-coated frame. Here's the rear suspension and frame, three leaf springs. Here is the standard Sterling rear axle. Now here's the interior of this truck. This is where it's kind of a mix between an XL and an XLT. You're still gonna get your power windows and door locks on this truck. All your sync controls on the steering wheel. AC controls. You have your two four-wheel drive system as well as the ability to lock your rear differential by pulling this knob out. Trailer brake controller. There are your six upfitter switches. If you're not familiar with what they are, they simply provide you a factory built-in switch with powered relays for accessories such as LED lights, overhead lights, warning lights, things like that. One thing to note, this is hard plastic. Um, to get to your soft touch materials, you have to go to a Lariat or higher model. Here's the back seat area. As you can see, completely flat. This does have the premium vinyl flooring, which I actually have grown to prefer. I think if I order another truck and that's an option, I'm gonna get it. It is an option on your King Ranch and your Platinum trucks as well to upgrade to the uh, vinyl flooring. The rear seat folds up, gives you a really nice flat cargo area back here. Both seats fold up. As you can see, there's no large center console. It's essentially a floor console gives you three cup holders in the back, as well as two, or maybe three up front, depending on the size of the cup, as well as a nice center storage area to hold things. To lower the back seat, you simply pull this lever and drop the seat. As you can also tell, similar to the Ram Tradesman Edition, there is actually no center console. In this particular truck as well, there's no cup holders for the back seat except for these two at the back of the floor console up front. And I only mention that because if you actually have people in the back or kids, in order for them to actually use the cup holder, it's a pretty long distance from the back of the seat for someone to lean forward to put cups into those cup holders. But that may, may not be a concern for most people. Here's your front end, front suspension, fully e-coated frame. Here's your front axle suspension system on this truck.
And because I can't actually put the caliper in and remove it and give a reading, the reading on this particular caliper of the frame thickness of the back is 0.169 inches. 0.169 inches thick. And the leaf springs are right at half an inch thick. So 59 inches from the ground up at the tire and 60 inches from the ground up at the very back of the truck. Tailgate to the ground measurement is right at 39 and 3 quarter inches. And measuring from the back of the front seat in a comfortable seating position for myself to the front of the rear seat is right at 16 inches. So another kind of different measurement I want to take is with the back seat folded up, how much usable floor room do you have inside? And I am taking into account that the back seats do lean back, and if you were going to put a large box back here that you'd have to essentially measure from about this point. If that's the case, a large square box or rectangle box would be right at about 22 inches before it would hit the top of the back of the seat. If it's smaller or flatter, you could probably go as much as 28 to 29 inches of total uh, width. So here's a shot of the engine running. So I can tell you there's a heck of a lot more room under the hood than there is if you buy a diesel. You can actually see the ground. This particular truck would be far less expensive to do any type of repair or maintain out of warranty than a diesel would be. So something that's very unique about this truck is that it was specced without running boards on it. And most people are going to put running boards, whether they're powered running boards or they're just going to get the factory ones installed. On this particular truck, I would highly recommend it, especially if you have a family that needs to climb in, or even yourself. This truck sits incredibly high off the ground without running boards, and running boards, I think, are mandatory if you're going to have a truck like this. Let me give you an idea. So without running boards, you have to step up 28 and a half inches to get into this truck. And that's from the front seat. From the back, you have to step up 32 inches to get to the floor of the back of the truck. That's more than two and a half feet. To get into this truck without running boards, I have to literally climb as high as I can to get into this truck. And that could become tiring after a short period of time, so I definitely recommend you opt to pay the little bit extra and get the, uh, the step sides on this truck. One thing I'd like to point out is I really don't care for the placement of the door lock buttons down here on the truck. Typically, if you get in the truck, you want easy access to them, and this just feels kind of cramped to get to your door lock buttons here. It would have been nicer if they placed them here or even right here. I understand placing them here could pose maybe a, a theft risk problem if somebody tries to snake in through the top to press the button. But down here, it's just not very convenient. Also, as you can see, there's absolutely zero center armrest, not even on the seats. So you really have nowhere to rest your arm except on your lap if you're going to be driving. And it would have been nice that they put some fold-down armrests, even on this model of truck. I think people appreciate that. You do have your standard 400-watt AC outlet on this truck, as well as a DC cigarette plug there, another 12-volt outlet there, and then your USB port here. Plus you have a pocket down here as well. Still has a CD player. A lot of vehicles don't come with those anymore. And then your gauge cluster up front here is pretty nice. It gives you pretty much all the information you need. This little area right here gives you the ability to make some changes to some settings. So this particular truck has mirrors very similar to General Motors mirrors, um, except that these are not power folding and you have to manually extend them. So if you want to fold them in, you're going to have to get out and fold the mirrors in and then you can pull the mirrors out to extend them to towing position. But as you can see, they do have nice uh, spot mirrors below them. It does have that separate pocket or, or box above the glove box, as well as a reasonable size glove box. And as you can see, this truck does not have any type of sliding rear glass. It is a solid piece of glass. So you know, for me, the jury's still out on whether aluminum is ultimately gonna be a better material to use in pickup trucks than steel. Um, the thing that concerns me 
isn't so much how rugged the aluminum is because you know I think from a dent perspective from normal daily use it's very unlikely that you're going to cause any type of significant damage to a aluminum truck that you wouldn't similarly cause to a steel truck. Where I'm more concerned is when you have those awkward little accidents, like maybe you're backing into a spot or maybe there's something low or you're going through the ranch and a tree or a limb catches the side of your truck. I've seen these interesting dents and I'll show you a picture of one here, that when it happens on a steel truck it creates a crease. Um, but ultimately, you know, a lot of people continue to drive around with a truck like that. My only real concern is that with an aluminum truck, what would that same type of accident do to it? Would it tear through the aluminum? Would it cause it to rip? Um, it's really hard to say. I might try to do a video where I get a couple body panels from both a steel truck and an aluminum truck, at least the door panels, and do some testing. Uh, hopefully, you know, the dealerships have some vehicles that have been in accidents and they can provide me those. I'd really like to see the different types of damages that both aluminum and steel doors can incur um, with different types of strange accidents, such as, you know, a sharp tree limb or, you know, a metal post, things like that. So, who knows, maybe they'll let me uh, get a couple body panels from these different trucks so I can do some testing. I think it'd make for a good video. Regarding the price of this truck, this one being right at about $46,000. You know, I don't know exactly what type of total incentives your dealerships are going to be able to offer you. Right now, these Ford trucks are selling incredibly quick. So even if you find a truck, by the time you get to it, it may actually be sold. So they're not offering the types of discounts you might see on other truck manufacturers at this point. Anyways, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this review of this 2017 F-250 Super Duty STX model. So I want to thank AutoNation Ford in Corpus Christi, Texas. This is actually the dealership where I purchased my 2016 F450. Um, it's a great place to buy a vehicle. Um, they have really good pricing. And if you are in the market for a Ford vehicle, I highly recommend you give them a call um, if you're in the area or if you're willing to make a short trip. Anyways, if you like my channel, please like and subscribe. Thank you.